Hi there. Welcome to a very new episode of Branding with Friends, the show where branding meets key small business topics. Here, you're going to learn tips straight from the experts on everything from search engine optimization to writing a book, to marketing that book, to how to optimize your social media. Here, we focus on what you can do right now to use these topics plus the power of branding to attract your ideal clients. I'm your host, branding expert, Annie Franceschi of Greatest Story Creative. I help small business owners tell their story and show their value through clear messaging and consistent branding. I'm also a former Disney storyteller, professional speaker, and the author of the best-selling book, Permission to Try. And today I'm going to introduce you to one of my new friends in the business world. If you have been kind of curious about whether your contracts are in good place, or you've been avoiding dealing with your contracts like the plague for your coaching or consulting practice, you are going to love today's guest. My guest today is the dynamic Yasmin Salem Hamden. Yasmin is the is a business and brand protection lawyer based in Dallas, Texas. Through her startup, Coaches and Company, she aims to support online coaches, course creators, entrepreneurs, and entrepreneurs by providing access to to lawyer created legal resources such as contract templates in order to in order for entrepreneurs to protect their powerful brands avoid expensive legal problems and create peace of mind and confidence in their businesses she's a texas gal at heart loves a good taco and enjoys spending her time with her loved ones including her one year old son oh well i'm so glad you are here yasmin thank you so much for joining us in branding with friends oh thank you so much annie for having me i'm so excited to be here me too. And I didn't realize you have a one-year-old son. My son is um, turning nine months this month. So they're somewhat close in age. What's your son? What's your son's name? His name is Musa, M-U-S-A. It's Arabic for Moses. Oh, and our, our son's name is Leo. So it's, it's, uh, I don't know what for lion and brave. Oh, I love it. I was going to say, I was a big Leonardo DiCaprio fan back in the day. Yeah. He's definitely named for Leonardo DiCaprio. Well, actually, we yeah. joked about that, but he's not. We can say um, that. Yeah. Yes, but you know, mompreneur, mompreneur to mompreneur. I'm so glad you're here. Um, we're here to talk about a topic that doesn't get a lot of attention, but is really, truly so important, which is having contracts as a coach, consultant, or service business owner. I know this is one of the amazing things you do as a um, brand protection lawyer um, based in Texas, but I know you work with people all over. So um Tell us a little bit about how you got into this world. What, what interests you about working with coaches and consultants and helping them from a legal perspective? Yeah. So where do I begin? I, I initially had launched my firm in 2017, late 2016, early 2017. And I really positioned myself as a business and brand protection lawyer that worked with entrepreneurs. So it was really general. I didn't have this really narrow niche. Um, audience or ideal client. It was really just like entrepreneurs because all entrepreneurs needed my services. So I figured, hey, I'll just keep it, you know, this broad. Um, And in hindsight, it's very clear how much of a rookie I was because, you know, I I did well, we did well at the firm, um, but I continually struggled with my messaging and with my content. And so as I I went through that struggle and I moved through that struggle. It became clear to me and where it really came to a head was when I was on maternity leave, actually. Mm -hmm. In, um, in 2019, I realized that I, uh, needed to narrow who it was that I was speaking to in my messaging, who I was really creating content for, who I was helping guide and take through the process of, okay, you're building this incredible business how, what do you need to protect and how do you do that with ease, right? It doesn't need to be the scary beast of the law or very intimidating process. It's, it's within reach of everybody and it's, it's totally doable and can happen for you. And so I realized while I was on maternity leave, you know, that, that distance gives you perspective, it does. right? It really gives yeah. you perspective. And so I, I realized that who I really enjoyed working with were other professionals that were leveraging their knowledge and leveraging their expertise. And moving into the consulting um, strategist coach space, yeah. uh, packaging knowledge and expertise. And it was just, and it still, it really lights me up. And at the time I was like, oh my God, how did I not see this before? How was it not yeah. obvious? Um, but again, you know, that perspective is, is sometimes what you need. And so 
yeah, that's how I got to where I am. Um, we can talk more about how coaches and company came about, but that's really how I entered this space in this industry. Well, I think you really illustrated a lot of like the branding of branding with friends, which is this idea of it makes your life easier when you know who you're talking to. And it seems like you went, you know, you were successful and, and you can be successful when you have a more broad audience. Um, but can you really thrive and love what you do and be incredibly profitable um, without doing that? I don't, I don't know. And I think you, you kind of perfectly demonstrated how this works and what I'm always teaching my clients. Uh, one of the things I call it is like, what is, uh, who can you add the most value to? That's really what an ideal client is. Is like not you can add, we both you and I can both add a lot of value to lots of different kinds of business owners. But there are certain kinds of business owners we have so much more to offer them. We have so much more value, whether it's through yeah. free content like what you're experiencing today, or work one on one where we can add so much value. We have the most valuable solutions for their biggest problems. That's all this really is. It's not about inventing an avatar who you know looks just like you and likes to shop at J Crew like. It, it's not about that. It's really, truly about meeting people um, where you can add the most benefit and then really zeroing in on that. And that you've perfectly done that. I think that's how we found you um, because I, as you know, I'm always looking for great guests for branding with friends who know their stuff and who work with, who share an audience so that when I send you guys uh, to branding with friends, um, you are going to find an expert who also works with you and understands your specific problem. So we're not talking brick and mortar today. We're talking coaches, consultants, and service business owners. Um, and if you've ever ever watched Branding with Friends and maybe you haven't, you know that we're going to talk about three big tips today to improve your contracts. So to be thinking about contracts and how they work in your coaching practice, um, Yasmin has been so kind to come up with three great tips and we're going to do the first two and then she's got something special for you guys. And at the very end of the episode, we'll do the third tip. So make sure you listen all the way to the end to get the most value out of today. And with that, um, I know you've come armed with some really good uh, overview, some really key things that we need to keep in mind about contracts when we have a service-based business. So what would be that first thing we really want to be mindful of? Yeah, absolutely. Well, let me just say first is you're yeah. speaking to my, you're speaking to my heart and all oh, of good. that in terms of, you know, when you really identify who you can provide the most value to or add the most value to, um, it, it just provides a release, I guess. It, just, yeah. it doesn't become, it no longer is uh, forced or I guess, what is the word I'm looking for? You don't feel like you're walking, you're moving through your business, wearing like soaking wet clothes where every movement is just so much energy is expended, right? right. Instead, it just becomes effortless and it just moves easily because that's your person. So, well, and yeah. you're also not having to customize your process every time because working yeah. with a coach is really different than working with a brick and mortar company or a product based company. It's just a totally different mindset. So you have to shift everything you offer, shift everything you do, and you can't be as much of an expert as I, I, I think you make a really excellent point, which if I had to summarize is it makes life easier for you too. It makes it fun. Yes, it makes it simpler. It, it makes it lighter um, because you can really, you know, become an expert at what you're doing and not be such a generalist in every world that you're be soaking wet clothes was a very clear yeah. analogy. Yeah. So with that in mind, what's the first tip that we should be mindful of? Yeah. So the first tip I want to share with y'all today is really um, touching on our intellectual property assets as online business owners, as coaches, as consultants, as service providers, when we create content, um, when we're building a brand, the value of our business it is not derived from our physical assets, right? Maybe like a traditional business or a brick and mortar, you know, we don't have the inventory, the equipment, the, the storefront, the, right. the, you know, the actual office space. It really might only be your computer and maybe your cell phone. Right. That might be the only physical asset of your business. Um, and then maybe some like a whiteboard and, and some dry erase markers, because I'm a dry erase marker junkie. Like I love to write all of my dry erase board. And so when we are having content created within our businesses, whether that's photography, videography, written copy, even audio um, content, that is an asset of your business. And so I really want for you all to shift your perspective and start looking at everything that you create within your business as an asset, because mm. those are copyright assets. That's a type of intellectual property. And when you own a copyright, you have a number of rights with respect to that piece of content. You have the right to reproduce it, 
to um, repurpose it, to create derivative works based on it, to publish it, to make copies of it, to distribute it, to make, uh, to profit off of it, really to use it in any way, shape or form you wish to use it. Now here's the tip. At some point in your business, you won't be the one creating all of the content, right? Mm -hmm. You won't be the one writing all the copy, taking the photos, filming the video, um, editing, whatever it might be, right? Creating graphics and, yep. and illustrations. When you enter into that relationship with the content creator, the original creator of a work is the one who owns all of those rights we just listed, right? The right to, to do whatever it is you want to do yes. with that content. So it's super important when you enter into that contractor, if you hire them as an independent contractor to write that copy, to take those photos, to film that video, to create this audio, um, maybe a ghostwriter to write your book, whatever it might or be. Or a branding person to create your brand. Yeah. Or a branding person to create your brand. Yes. Um, design components and illustrations and whatever it might be, right? All of that is owned by that original creator of the work. So in the contract, the services agreement between yourself, your company and that other company or that other individual, super important that you include very specific language that expressly transfers ownership of those assets because ownership cannot be transferred without that express language, that very clear language that transfers ownership. And so if that language doesn't exist in your agreement, in your relationship, and in the context of this context, creation, that original creator of the work maintains ownership and you just have a limited license to the use of it in the way, maybe it's photos that I wanted to use for my website. I only have a license to use those photos on my website. I can't reproduce them or use them in different platforms. And that original creator of the work could turn around, maybe put those photos up on a stock photo website and continue to profit off of that content. Yeah. So I think it, it all really boils down to first step is you need to change your perspective of how you're looking at the content you're creating in your business. Content is not, you know, quality content is not a dime a dozen, right? Quality right. content requires um, intention, intentionality and creativity. And just the, there's so much to be said on that, but I'm going to leave there it is. there. But I think, I think you <laughs> bring up a great point. And if I were to like really boil it down, it seems like carefully review your contracts for copyright information and make sure that copyright information is explicitly stated and whatever you agree to, it can be okay sometimes to let the other content creator keep their copyright for whatever reason. Maybe it's, it's more affordable to you because often it will be more expensive for you to work with professional if they are giving away their copyright, right? Cause then they're giving up their right to reproduce it and to profit as you gave some great examples. Um, it happens a lot with photography, right? So it's more expensive for it, to get those photos but then you gain the rights to use them in lots of different ways. Um, or you work that out in your licensing. I think one of the best things I learned in my experience doing this and being on both sides of the table is to look at it this way, which is, it's all about having the conversation about the contract and about how the copyright's going to work. Like I do writing for businesses. I do their logo and things like that. There are some design agencies that don't give away the copyright of the logo. And I don't understand how that works. I do that. And I do it so that once the project is paid in full, the copyright goes from me to you or whatever the business may be. And I keep a license to use it in my portfolio. Right. Keep exactly. it. And that's, that's uh, there's standard. lots of things you can do. That's pretty yeah. standard, right? Like, but it's have the conversation, right. And be thoughtful about Absolutely. whoever you work with, whether it's a branding person, photography person, videography person, you just want to know, you don't want to limit yourself in the use of things, especially when you have a business. And I, I love what you just said, um, sort of adjacent to that, which is as people who create, you know, sort of everything's in our brains or on our computers, that's, they're still assets. They're still assets yeah. to our business. So we have to protect them. So great tips there. What would be the next thing we really want to be mindful of when it comes to contracts? Yeah. So the next tip that I want to share with you is um, really about as we, as service providers, coaches and consultants, as we expand on our offers. You might start out with just one offer. Mm -hmm. And so that one offer, you have a services agreement, you have terms and conditions, maybe it's a course, right? You've got the terms and conditions in place. And then you decide to expand on your product suite, right? Or expand on the, into a different offering. And maybe you're launching a group program, or maybe you're launching a one-on-one -on -one intensive or VIP day type offer. 
those offers have different implications. Yes. They have different, um, different boundaries need to be put in place. There are different policies that need to be communicated, right? That need to be created and yes. put in place and communicated to the client. And so I guess the, the bottom line is, is the terms and conditions of the contract that you are, that you have in place with one offer don't, oh, that doesn't always work right. to apply it within a different offering, right? Especially if the offer is of a different nature, it's a different type of relationship, it's a different rendering of service. Um, and so I really want to share that is because I see that happening a lot is people will, yeah. let's say they, they provide a one-on-one -on -one service and then they launch a course or they're selling a digital product or yeah, or they're you know doing a group program and they use the exact same language within those offers. And I'm just like, that is not doing you any favors, you know? And yeah, it's, it's not a good practice. It can't be a cut and paste activity, right? Which it is for so many people. Oh, I need to throw those terms and conditions on there. Well, is there a recording? Yeah. You know, is it live time with you? What are, what if they need to reschedule? Exactly. Like it's answering all these exactly. questions. Yeah. Yes. But I think that that's a great, oh, yeah. great point to make, which is add that to your workflow, right? So if you are branding a new product, creating a new service, whatever, you have got to make sure that you are reviewing what is the contract? What is the terms and conditions you are asking people? And has it changed any from what you've created before? Are there questions that are going to come up that you could easily answer in your terms and conditions, right? Yeah. Oh, and that brings up a, another, I guess, like a bonus tip under that one is <laughs> review your contracts regularly. Yes. You know, things might change, your offers change, your business changes, uh, maybe the law has changed. So periodically every six months, at least every year, make sure that you're reviewing those. Yes. Make sure to review them. And if you have updated branding, you can put them in your branding and make them look beautiful too. That's something I hadn't thought to say today, but that is an aspect of branding we don't think about is even your legal documents should have your logo at the top and can be done in your brand colors and your brand fonts, as long as they're legible, hopefully they're legible. Um, right. So we've talked a couple about, a, um, several great things today. So we were talking about sort of this overarching idea that we need to make sure that anybody we're working with, we understand what the copyright situation is going to be um, and that we're comfortable with that. So sort of, you know, investigating copyright. And then we just talked about that. We want to make sure that we are being just as intentional in our own businesses about um, how we want to work with people and how that might change from a service to a program, to a product, or even to service to service, because those services may be different right? And sort of go through and ask those questions. Um, I know you have a third great tip for us today, but before we get to that, uh, I know you have a really wonderful, um, valuable thing you want to share with our audience. So what is it you would like to share with Branding with Friends? Yeah. So Coaches and Company is a business that uh, we started earlier this year. It's an online resource site where online business owners like course creators, coaches, consultants, service providers are able to access high quality lawyer created legal resources. And we've got contract templates right now. We're going to be rolling out other resources like eBooks and courses. Um, but right now it is the go-to place. And it's really the only place online that is created and designed with online business owners in mind. Mm -hmm. And so we've got a free legal checklist available for immediate download on the site, coachesandcompany.com. Um, you can head there and download your legal checklist and kind of get a good idea of where you stand right now. Because I think that's the first step for a lot of people is a lot of people are, are hesitant, are intimidated by the process or kind of like, you know, stick their fingers in your ears or, you know, stick their head in the sand, like, la, 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 I can't hear you. I don't know. You know, I don't want to deal with this. But I really think the first step is kind of taking the pulse of your business. Like, where do we stand? What do we have in place? And what is the next step in figuring out that game plan? So yeah, we've got that. We've got that at coachesandcompany.com along with tons of other resources that were designed with online businesses in mind, ready to plug and play, super easy to use. Um, on the note that you mentioned, as far as like on being on brand within your legal, within your legal stuff, not only is it ready for you to plug in your logos, but also it's, they're all, all of our resources are legally used free. Ooh. So we don't have all of the there of, whereas heretofore, like all of the weird legal the jargon. Yeah. Yeah. For some reason people still use, I don't know why, but you know, that's a thing. 
So we don't do that. Um, we want you to be able to understand your contracts and more importantly, also be able to explain them to clients because how awkward to have a client ask you, what does this section mean? And you're just like, hmm, let me get back to you. Well, that happens that. sometimes. I think that's a really good point yeah. of whether, even if you take advantage of these great templates that y Yasmin offers through coaches and company, you really want to make sure that you have a perspective on them. That's really what contracts are a reflection of your business decisions and your business policies. Like, how do you want to work with somebody? Yeah. How do you want to handle conflict? So you can tell I was like a lawyer in another life, right? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> if I had another career, maybe I would have been a lawyer. Um, but I designed branding I mean, with that in mind. You've been hitting the head. Great businesses are smart about this stuff. And that's why I, I wanted to have you come talk about this because it isn't like the sexiest topic in the world, even when it comes to branding and legal, but it is important. And it's something that reflects you as a professional and also can really protect you and your clients and, tr and make sure that you have great client experiences. So that's why it's really, really uh, important. Um, I often call it so the 10, the, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, can I hire you as our spokesperson? There you because go. I'll just you're go just like, you're speaking truth. I try to speak the truth. I, I've, I'm a big fan of contracts. And what I was just going to say is that um, I often call it like the 10 minutes that'll save your business, which is I always do a contract review with my clients um, because I found that most people don't read them. They just don't read contracts. Or if you think they read them, they did not read the part you wanted them to read. And you find that out a couple yeah. months into a project and there's conflict and you don't want that to happen in a great client experience. So I send 10 minutes to walk you through it and handhold you through it and make sure everything's clear. And that tends to make a much smoother process because we've all talked about it beforehand. So that ends yeah, up being absolutely. pretty helpful. Um, so that is how you're going to find Yasmin. She's got this great legal checklist. I definitely think you should check it out. I will definitely do that because I need to know where I am in the spectrum of legal. I'm a little afraid to check it out, but I know you've made it easy for me. Uh, if this episode has gotten you thinking about your branding going, well, gosh, I'd love to put it in brand fonts and colors and put my logo at the top, but I don't have those things or I hate those things right now. You can always hop on my calendar at greateststorycreative.com. Just follow the big red button for a free consultation with me privately. Um, Yasmin, thank you so much for being here. I know you've got one last tip. So just to recap, we talked about, you always want to review the copyright with whoever you're working with. You want to update your terms and conditions as you add services and other offerings. What is the third thing we really should be mindful of if we're going to try to at least get started with optimizing contracts? Yes. So our third and final tip is really all about your website and your legal compliance in terms of what kind of data you're collecting on visitors to your website and customers. And it's something that a lot of people don't realize is actually very serious is um, the government and the government's eyes, they take data collection very seriously and how you're collecting personal information about individuals and consumers, including their email addresses, their names, their phone numbers, their payment information, of course, um, their mailing addresses, all of this information is considered personal data in the eyes of the law. And so by law, we are required as business owners, if our website collects information about individuals, even if it's just an email address for a, mail, a newsletter yeah. or a free, a free download, that's considered collection of personal data. And so we are required to have privacy policies on our websites. And these privacy policies really communicate to visitors of your website and the government, how you are, what kind of information you're collecting, how you're collecting it, how you're managing it, how you're storing it, how you're using it, how, if you're selling it to other parties, because that's something others, some people do. Personally, I don't engage in that practice, but that's a practice that takes place. And so we need to make sure that we are complying with the law, we're in compliance and that we're not gonna find ourselves in hot water. Yes. I'm so glad you brought that up because that's one of those things that some, I do design websites for many of our clients as part of a full brand story solution. And I often bring this up. I say, I can't write it because it's legal, legalese, but again, it's another set of decisions, yeah. just like your regular contracts are. You don't realize that yeah. you do have to communicate something about how you're going to use people's email addresses and information. Yeah. It's yeah. called a privacy policy or terms and conditions. I'm sure coaches and company has great solutions for that um, as well. Yeah. So you can check that out. So hopefully by the end of this episode, you've gotten thinking you're going to get some of these things in place. You're going to make sure that you are protecting yourself and also protecting the great people that you work with. Yasmin, thank you so much for, for being here. I'm so glad that people know a little bit more about you. Thank you so much, Annie, for having me. This is lovely. I so appreciate it.
Absolutely. Well, you'll know where to find Yasmin. Her information will be wherever you're listening to or watching Branding with Friends. I hope that you enjoyed yet another episode of Branding with Friends. Um, so many thanks to my special guest, uh, Yasmin Salem Hamden. Tune in next time when we're going to tackle yet another topic where branding meets business. Until then, I'm Annie Franceschi of Greatest Story Creative. You can find all our episodes, branding resources, and more at my website, greateststorycreative.com. Have a great day.